Hello and welcome to a pair of Dice Lost podcasting channel. My name is Brendan, my pronouns are he, him, and I'll be your storyteller for this game about living gods on the wrong side of the law. Joining me for this game is... Hey there guys, my name is Tyler, my pronouns are he, him, I'm going to be playing uh, Ricky, the fire affected street exorcist. Hi everybody, my name is Christina, I will be playing Elion. My pronouns are she, her, and Elion's pronouns are they, them. They are a water aspected investigator. Hi everyone, my name's Cody, pronouns are he, they, and I play Amalar Divine, the air aspected shady businessman. Hi, my name is Britt, and my pronouns are she and her. I play a wood aspect named Rush Ferris, who has a ferret familiar named Zeke. Together, they specialize in archery, larceny, and dance. Hi, I'm Michaela, she, her, and I'll be playing Tarali of House Regara, an earth aspected leader of a small military force known as the Tyrants, who collects the books for the gang. And this is Exalted, like a dragon blooded. Act 3 A Hundred Kingdoms, A Hundred Heresies. The neon lights are everywhere. The, the 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 small little adventuring quests and gambling casinos are all around. And when last we left everyone off, well, at least the first four of you, Divine went off and did something else. But when last we left all of you off, uh, you all had recently reconvened somewhere in Nexus, and then an arrow was shot from the top of a building uh, towards Ferris, which she deftly dodged out of the way. And if I recall, you all went into an alleyway i could be incorrect well uh ricky fuller and ferris were together ferris uh dodged it and had them stay low and they all ducked into an alley where they ran into tarali and elion ah, who were okay in the shortcut okay and then i believe that we left off with a bit of uh uh Molten, not molten, but uh, but a bit of essence being kind of thrown down and it kind of like scorching the ground just where that Ferris had been outside of the alleyway. And I believe that you guys could see a form up on top of a uh, on top of a building uh, taking a familiar stance. Divine, on the other hand, uh, missing up until this point, uh, does come in and see this scene. Um, Divine, would you like to describe yourself for the rest of the group? Yeah, so... Divine looks like his usual self, other than the fact of the kabuki-style jaguar face paint and cat ears that now uh, adorn his head. Walking down the street, he looks up and sees the essence splash and goes... Well, shit. It looks like himself, but prettier. Now, you were coming, you saw this, it remind me, you saw this when you were coming out of uh, the Maid Cafe, right? Uh, Yeah, coming out of the Maid Cafe, and I think I was heading, like, I'm on the main fairway. Mm-hmm. And I do believe that I described uh, everyone else being in an alley uh, kind of hiding out so then that you are like right on the scene, ready to go. Yeah, right. Right after signing a contract saying that neither me nor my friends will cause any trouble with Nexus, I see something that looks like Elian's essence blast go off. Ferris is ducked down. She's not standing up completely straight. She's staying ducked down. Yep. And then the person took off running. So, with that interesting bit of Elian's past coming back to finally bite them in the butt, what do you all do from here? I mean, I make sure Ferris is okay. I'm like looking her over, literally asking if she's okay. Uh, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I didn't get hit. Um, I can't say the same for the person next to me, or that was near me. They got hit in the shoulder. Well, since those arrows look like yours, we we'll, like, grab them so that they don't try and pin another assault slash murder on you. 
I mean, I've since changed how my arrows look since the last one that was used against me. And yet they still tried to frame you for murder with the last one. And it was different also. Fair. Um, since whoever it is is aiming at me, I don't think it is wise that I go out and collect the arrow. Well, they... And Elion obviously, like, very... They, everybody could see that they were peeking out, um, trying to get a look, and had come back. Um, so they just kind of look at Ferris. They they took off running, so I think we're okay for now. That's That will be a later problem, though. All right, then let's uh, go collect it. It was uh, one arrow, Brendan, or two that got shot? Oh, I know one hit a person. One. It was one arrow that got shot, and then the second thing that came down at you was actually the golden essence ball. Gotcha. Okay, so then if you guys are going to go... Uh, who's going to go collect it, then? I'll get it. Okay. Uh, Rick, go for Rick it. will be a lot more casual about it. I'm not going to be able to tell them what happened and why they got shot by accident. Okay, so Ricky goes out. There is a person... There is a small crowd gathering as a person appears to be... Uh, Bleeding from a uh, a shoulder wound from a, with an arrow sticking out of their out of their shoulder, they oh, are yeah. they are not looking so great. Uh, they they look like that they might have like the uh, they they have paler skin than most everyone else, uh, and kind of like a uh, long thick matted hair. Uh, so your best guess is probably from the north. Um, and they're just kind of like. Oh, oh. Oh man, this is not a good thing. This is not good. And there's like yeah. a small crowd gathering around them. Uh, uh yeah, I'm just gonna walk up. Hey there, guy. Uh, what's what's up? How you doing there? That doesn't look too good. N- no, uh, it does not no, look good. Are you- no, I'm gonna make you a deal here. I need that arrow back, but I'm gonna help you not hold on to it, and maybe not be in pain and not get worse deal you're going to take the arrow yeah but i'm gonna take it out of you where it should not be this sounds like a fantastic deal win-win for me right win-win for you all right uh yeah i want to use a medicine roll to try to get the arrow out of this guy and make him not get worse and okay um i'm gonna say that that's going to be dex and medicine as that you're trying to like get it out okay before i roll uh i'm going to like uh is he wearing like clothing or anything i'm yes. not sure he's wearing clothing what is he wearing uh he is wearing uh thick animal hides that have been kind of like done up with uh some drawings and stuff on them uh you you you're not sure where from but they are definitely like thicker hides I'm going to, like, either take off a loose piece of it or, like, cut a piece of it off and then stick it in his mouth. Bite on that. Uh, Oh, oh, yeah. I'm gonna... Yeah, this isn't gonna feel too good. I'm gonna stab the arrow the rest of the way through his shoulder and then break the tip off. Uh... He he scream. Yeah, okay. Uh, he, He scream a lot. He scream. Because I'm, uh, assuming, I'm assuming these arrows are like barbed. I mean, you're you're so about like to find I'm... out. I would yeah. say, give me that Dex and Medicine roll for describing it. I will give you two extra dice and an auto success. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use a willpower on this if I can. Okay, so then that'll be two extra successes then. Uh, that's six successes. Okay. Wow, those those dice are just feast or famine, like nothing and then two tens. Yep. Uh, okay, so with six successes total, um, you manage to pull the arrow through, break it off, and then get the rest of it out of him uh, without any issue uh, that you can tell. Um, the arrow was, in fact, barbed, and it did 
cost him uh it did hurt a lot more but with having the uh the leather in his mouth uh his screams were very muffled um it takes a little bit longer than you thought that it would as it appears that the shaft is slightly thorny as if it was made from a very hard rose bush so when you pulled it out it actually like took a little bit more skin with it Ew. that's fucked up yeah. But it is now out. Is it bleeding real bad? Um, yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, I'll probably, like, pack that and tell him to go see a doctor. Real quick. Because we got things to do, I assume. Uh, yes. Uh, so you tell him to go see a doctor. He He nods to you, and you see that he takes out a small, like, coin purse... And he hands you like a he hands you a a use of resources one worth of Nexus bucks. Hey. <laughs> Am I to assume it's his it's his it's his Nexus bucks that he got for entering Nexus? Uh you could assume that or it it might be something else, but he he definitely kind of like pays you for your services in the local currency. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to hand it back to him. Pay for a nice doctor, and I'm going to run away. Okay. Um, he he looks befuddled when you do that, and but, like, uh, goes to look for a doctor. Uh, Ricky, since you are out on the streets and everything, I want you to give me a perception and awareness roll. Oh, God. All right. I don't know. Whenever I roll perception awareness, I always get like five successes on four dice. Uh, I got my willpower back because I just stunted real good, right? So can I just yep. use another willpower? You can. Cool. Um, because is it like a crowded street? Uh, yes, yes, it is a crowded street. Uh, everybody like, is currently gathered around and like f- kind of concerned. Ricky's gonna like. Find something to climb on to get a better view of the rooftop. Like, find, like, a lamppost or, like, climb on a large dude who seems like he can uh, hold my weight so I can see better. (laughs) Okay, just going on Philly rules here, okay. Yeah. That's how they do it in Detroit. Yeah, I'll give you you two extra dice for that. (laughs) Yeah! Five successes. <laughs> what the hell? Every time. Wait, no, isn't it six? Because you used a willpower too. It is six. You're right. <laughs> Who says you can't have nothing in Detroit? Okay. <laughs> so, as you're getting back to the alleyway with all of your friends, as you glance around, you notice something odd in your peripheral vision. Uh, a few times, actually, uh, there is. Uh, multiple times there are people, uh, you're not sure of their gender, uh, they're just kind of, like, very androgynous looking, but they're very flamboyant, almost like peacocks, um, with, like, gaudy clothing, and that, that has a lot of, like, grass and, like, weird little, like, accoutrements on them, um, that seem almost, like, ethereal, like, there are bits of them that you can kind of, like, see through, um, and... You see this person out of, like, the corner of your eye, like, to the left, you look over, they're gone. You see them out of the right, you look over, they're gone. Uh, You kind of, like, stop for a moment, turn, and do, like, a quick, like, 360, and you see one at one, you see, you see the person again kind of doing a little uh, spin dance, almost like a, like a ballerina twirl, and they kind of, like, fade into the crowd. But this person is, like, almost everywhere and nowhere. Hmm. And then you're back in the alley. Yeah. There's weird shit going out here, guys. Uh, the dude who got hit with that arrow of uh, not yours is uh, probably fine. I ripped the arrow out. I hold the broken arrow in my hand. Uh, I don't know. Weird vibes. There's someone out there that I can't like pin down, if you know what I mean. What did they look like? Uh, I'm just going to kind of word vomit the description you gave me. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, I literally just said it. I don't expect it to stick in your brain just yet. Um, Kind of word vomiting up that description. Um, 
some of the things that he has said uh, that Ricky says uh, do remind you of uh, kind of the uh, the vibe and the uh, the aesthetic that Kai kind of gave off during when you saw them during calibration. Uh, whereas that uh, like they're very like peacocky. They 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 like to show off. Okay, I'm pretty sure I know who that is. Same person that shot at Ferris. Oh. They're just taunting us at this point. So, what's, what's the plan now? Well, we can either keep going along our way, and there's a chance that he may show up again, or we try to go after them. Which may be exactly what they want. I'm not sure. But if they're out here doing this sort of thing, they probably want something. Could yeah. I uh, disguise up again while we're here? Pretty sure they're the ones that tried to frame Ferris to begin with. Um, um. When it came to her brother. Uh, and I'm pretty sure they're just doing it to get under my skin. Mm. Oh. Uh, point of note, they practice the same martial arts I do. Other than that, I'm not sure what they're, they've been doing with their life. I've heard some rumors that they've... Well, they're kind of not working on our side of the crime life. Uh-huh. How do you know them? They used to go to our dojo. And then kind of bastardize and misuse my family's martial arts style. Mm. Hence why they know it. Uh, so they were kicked out. And make a habit of occasionally taunting me. With the fact that they are not involved in the dojo anymore, but still know the most martial arts style. Weird. And apparently have progressed further than I have. Whether that's good or bad is left to be seen. I'm trying to take it slower and steady since it's essence and my body doesn't get overwhelmed with it. So him progressing so quickly could be bad for him. Hmm. What are we doing then? I don't know if it's better to lay low or to try to go after him at this point. It's very crowded, so I don't think trying to do chase through here is going to be beneficial for us. Okay, so uh, with all that said and done, uh, the group has now reconvened, though. Uh, Divine is there uh, with you all, I assume. Or are you still just kind of like hanging out, uh, Divine? I mean, I figure I probably saw Ricky pulling an arrow out of a guy and then followed him. That would make the most sense. Because I definitely uh, don't know what alley they're in. That's fair enough. Okay, so then with the group officially uh, reconvened, um, you know, uh, you guys can share any kind of information regarding the jobs that you have or things that you want to do in Nexus. Um, but if there's nothing that you guys want to pursue, I'm going to have stuff start to happen. If you guys are just sitting around for too long. A uh, question. If I were to do a disguise again, is it a larceny roll? Yes, it is a larceny roll. I will let you know that you will have penalties for just starting to try and do a disguise in the middle of an alleyway. Well, yeah, I just wanted to know. So that way. If I do start to do this, I can uh, get the charms, look through the charms I have real quick, so that way I'll be ready, and I'll know what I want to roll. I was not sure if that you all wanted to catch Cody up on what that you've all been doing, or if Cody wanted to catch uh, everyone else up about what that he's found out. I mean, I would like to make sure everyone's on the same page. Alright, I think I have the list of stuff I would use to become disguised. 
Okay. Give me that list while that we're waiting on them, and then we can uh, figure out what your disguise is going to be. And if anyone else wants to disguise themselves, now's a great time to do that. Um, I would be. But also, before you do that, Ferris, I would like you to also give me a perception awareness roll. I don't wanna. You're <laughs> too bad. Uh, is it anything to do with me being followed? I'm gonna go with yes. If I have to think about it, I'm going to go with yes. Okay, so I have the awareness specialty for being able to tell when followed. I also have a reflexive charm observer awareness method. Even the slightest ripple of attention is perceptible to the savvy dragonblood. When her suspicions are roused, she may invoke this charm to roll perception and larceny. As long as she rolls a single success, she can intuitively discern whether she's being watched and by how many people. Okay. With Larceny 4 and Essence 2, the Dragonblood may identify the precise location of an Observer if she beats the higher of his stealth or guile. Okay. Okay, so I will let you know that the higher of their stealth or guile is a 5. Mm-hmm. So, if I'm using that one, Observer Awareness method, I would be rolling my... Perception and larceny instead of my perception and awareness. Okay, well then, in that case, then... uh, mm, Then I can't use the specialty? Yeah, then you can't use the specialty. Is that a larceny charm? It is. That's such a weird charm. Yes, it is perception plus larceny. Okay, so... I mean, it's the same role for me, because my awareness is... Five and my larceny is five, but this one can tell me what um, if I'm being watched, how many, and since I have larceny five, essence four, mm-hmm. I can get the ident- I can get the precise location of them if I beat their stealth or guile. Okay. So I just get extra shit. Um. In that case, then you can use the larceny. Uh. Uh, what's called the Larceny Excellency to up that if you wanted. And hey, fun fact, uh, the Larceny Excellency is mute, which means that even if it comes from your peripheral, it does not flare your anima unless you want it to. Heck yeah. I mean, it's only... Actually, that's actually really good. Um, So here's my other question then. If I do the um, Excellency and I spend four motes to get two successes, and then I spend the one moat for the other charm, which that one moat would then make it five moats spent. It will not flare because of the other one is mute? Correct. I like that. I'm going to do that. So I'm going to spend five moats and get two auto successes. Do I have, like, a feeling that something's, like, watching me, which is why I'm rolling this, or do I just, like... With with, uh, with, with Ricky having uh, kind of told you guys who that uh, who that he saw, and kind of, like, the, the weirdness about it, like, yes, you, ha- you absolutely have a feeling that maybe you should be watching your back. Gotcha. So, um, I don't really have a good way to stunt this, so I'm just gonna... You're just gonna do it raw? Yeah. Okay. I didn't put the auto successes in, but that gives me eight with the two auto successes. Okay. So before you decided to do your disguise roll, I'm going to give you some weird fucking information here. Oh boy. Okay. So using the observer awareness method with the higher essence one, you can identify the precise location of exert of observers. If you beat their stealth or guile. Um, you are, your charm is kind of doing a very weird thing, which like, it it sounds weird to say that your charm is doing a weird thing, Mm -hmm. but it is identifying four different observers watching you, but it is counting them as one. Like, you are being observed once, but you are being observed by that same observer from four separate locations. Oh. Either way, this person or persons 
can see me where I'm at. Uh, yes. Uh, you know that the nearest one is actually on top of the building, hiding inside of the uh, inside of not the light fixture, but like kind of like using the lights to hide themselves. Uh, and they are watching uh, from like up above uh, the other three. There is one somewhere out in the alley where that Ricky and Divine just came from or out in the main thoroughway that Ricky and Divine just came from. There's another one looking in from a window and there's another one that seems to be um, somewhere underground and is not observing you through traditional means, uh, which means to say, like, maybe they're using something like uh, being able to, like, read through their palms or like the uh, one, one of those things. Like deep listening palm? Yes. <laughs> um, Ferris is just going to, after, you know, she's still ducked down trying to, like, stay low. She's just going to kind of, like, sit up a little bit more and, like, straighten her back and just kind of, like, look a little uneasy. And she's going to look to the group and just be like, without anyone panicking, I'm currently being watched by four of the same person. And I know that sounds crazy, but that's what I'm sensing. So we should probably get out of here. Yes, I think we should. And just keep our eyes peeled. So I got a spot, but Ricky's not going to like it. Why is that? Well, uh, I made a new business partner while we're here, while we were here. Uh, it's an old friend. And I don't, I don't like part of the going. contract is we're not allowed to, uh, you know, mess with his business. But hey. I got a new maid cafe. Well, I'm making royalties off of his maid cafe. What's this person's name? It it, it starts with a T and ends with an Anos. <laughs> so, just so you're aware, rumor has it that Kai used to work for him. The person that's after Ferris actively right now. But does used to mean still? I do not have an answer to that currently. You know, last time we talked, we actually just had a drink. So maybe we don't hate his guts like we used to. I still, he's still, still my favorite guy. But the main question I want to ask is, how are we going to get the fuck out of here without being tracked down? Might be able to hide at least... My tracks. I could try and lure them away, but I can't guarantee that all of them will go after me unless they're all actively after me. And the rest of you can stay with Ferris. That's not a bad plan. Uh, I'm sorry. Fular kind of speaks up and looks to Ellie and goes, yeah, that that's not a bad plan. Also, it, th- it would kind of be a little bad if uh me or she kind of like motions over at Ricky uh got uh got got jumped i got to kind of i got to kind of stick with this one or you know be in like a very safe place for both of our safety yes um also side topic um and I'm just kind of like pulls out a contract and hands it to uh divine um if i do break off from you just hang on to that i've already had got it memorized since i helped write it um it's someone that is relevant to the water elemental we ran into some time back and there are also um smuggling people supposedly so Probably useful. Uh, I'm going to open up and read the contract. Uh, Does it say the person's name on the contract? Yes. Uh, It does. Uh, Is the person's name on the contract the person? Is it uh, the same person I'm looking for? 
It is. Ha. Huh. Cool. Uh, awesome. So we're doing this official business now. Dope. That is an official contract um, and trade agreement. So if anyone interrupts us while we pursue that, they are interrupting trade and breaking one of the six rules. I should say they are obstructing trade, since that is the official wording of the rule. Yeah, I've uh, I've also got a lead. Uh, we'll we'll talk in a safer place when we catch back up with each other. Um, so the option is I can go off on my own and try to lead them away, or we can try and, in general, separate. But oddly enough, I don't think Ferris and I should be in the same group. Since I have a sneaking suspicion, they're going to be after one or both of us. Right, so who am I going with? You can... me and you will pair off. I do have a charm that I can use to kind of make myself less noticeable. Okay. Um, I'm reading it correctly. Okay, yeah. Um, invisible street performer technique. It's in performance. Oh, yeah. I know exactly what that one does. It, it basically lets you, uh, as long as you're doing a performance, you're not, like, noticed. Yeah, she rolls manipulation and performance. As long as she continues to perform, characters who resolve is beaten by her role cannot directly notice her. So you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna just dance on out of here? It says while they see or hear her artistic display, they pay no mind to the person performing it. So I figured if I start performing, and then we, I just perform my way to wherever we're going, and perform through the front door, I will okay. be mostly okay. Uh, there are a couple options to you guys. I, uh, the plan to split up is not a bad one. Uh, they're either going to go after uh, Ferris, who seems to be their target lately, or they might actually go to confront Elian uh, one-on-one, or maybe two-on-one, or however that it's going to be. Uh, but splitting the both of you up is probably not the worst idea. Um, who's going with who? And then I guess where is everyone going? I mean, I think keeping Ricky and Falar together is probably a good idea. Um, I think so, too. No, I am for a fact going with um, Divine. That's all I have confirmed. And Elion is not going with me. So Um, there are the two, there are two separations or one separation right there. I don't know if we're going to separate the party into even smaller groups or if like someone's going to choose to go with Elian, someone's going to choose to go with Divine and Ferris. I mean, it- and I'm I'm planning on uh stealthing up the street to avoid uh detection too, so cuz I figure While she can perform and not be seen, performances are noticeable, and I can't not be seen by her performance. So we probably won't be, like, right next to each other. Okay, so then the option is, do we split into four groups? Because that would put Elian and Tirali together, Divine and Ferris together, and Ricky and Falar together. So that's three groups, not four. Um... Uh, but that would put Elion and Tirali, who were martial artist fighters, together, and that might be, like, the stronger group together, so I don't know if that's good or not, and then, I don't I mean, know. it'll put you guys, who are really strong fighters, together, and then you got Divine and Ferris, who are, I'm assuming, but Divine is also good at stealthing, so we can kind of, like, sneak off. And then you got Ricky and Falar, who are Ricky and Falar. Yeah, Ricky and Falar. Ricky's gonna lean over. They ain't us, cause they ain't us. Ain't it the truth? It's bumped. Just, just cause my eyes are really good does not also mean my ears are not really good. Just to warn you two. Oh, but, but Divine's the one with the cat ears right now. And I have cat eyes, but regardless... The question is, do we... Charlie, how good are you at stealthy? 
because we can either do three groups or two or two groups of three. Which, if there's four of these things out there, that might incline them to split up two and two. If we're in three groups of two, they might do a one, one, two split. So one group will have two enemies after them, potentially. Okay, then. So, uh, to since this is going to inform a lot of what's going to happen next, uh, I would like the... Uh, the, the Tarali and Elian group to kind of uh, take the lead on this because uh, how that you guys do is going to very heavily influence how that uh, what happens to the rest of the group. So how are you guys approaching this? Are you guys going to try and sneak off or are you guys going to try and do the old uh, Ricky tactic of trying to actually actively get their attention and weed them off on a merry chase? I am not very stealthy. I have one dot in stealth. <laughs> I think that's still more stealth than Ricky has. Eh. I mean, he's got two dots and a distracting breeze meditation. <laughs> Dude, I don't even know, think I have any stealth arms if I'm being perfect. I just, I'm good at chasing people. And dodging. Is Tarali good at Hardcore parkour. No, it's yes, pretty athletic. You want to go up high and do this? How about this question? Um, are the way the building's set up here? Are we able to basically like go up high and kind of parkour away, like around this area? Elian's done it before, so I'm curious. Yes. Uh, to let you know, the uh, the alleyways here are close enough that uh, a relatively skilled mortal, let alone an exalt, could basically like wall jump their way up or like even run up or like find handholds. There's a lot of windows. There's a lot of uh, things to grab onto. There's a lot of uh, like like gutters and railings and things like that. A, if a mortal could do it, it would be mu it would be even easier for the both of you who I know are athletic and like can do stuff like that. Sorry, leap technique, man. <laughs> so you want to? And Elian just kind of points to the top of the buildings. You want to go that route? Let some of them stealth, and then whatever Falar and Rick you're gonna do. Let's go up, and Tarali will start trying to go up and, and using her intense strength and earth abilities, digging her fingers kind of into the brick uh, to get a grip and climb up. Okay. Um, for Elian, I'm going to ask for a Dex in Athletics. Uh, and then obviously you can describe that as you will. And for Tarali, uh, I'm going to ask for strength in athletics, and I will give you two extra dice for the description. Okay, so there's been a precedence that Elion has like run up walls or run up the side and let to get behind people and stuff like that. So Elion is literally going to parkour this. Um, they're going to find an alleyway to basically ping pong back and forth with their feet, bouncing back and back. And then when they get to the top, they're going to kind of leap up there. And whether Tarali get up there first or not, potentially wait for her. Okay. I will also give you two extra dice. Uh, I'm also going to use Soaring Leap Technique as well. Ooh. Ooh. Fancy. Gonna just make sure you get up there. I mean... Potentially. It really only helps if I get 10s, so. And I got a 10, but no 1s, so. 8 successes. No, it no, it rerolls a single non-1 failed die. Oh, okay. Never mind. You're right. Hold on. 9 successes. Surprising no one, the, uh, the, the rapid ascent of jumping from side to side is... Uh, faster than uh, digging your hands into the building and scaling it that way. What is more surprising, though, is that 
it is only slightly faster than digging your hands in and descending the building that way. Uh, you make it up there just a little bit before uh, Tarali, uh, just a little bit before Tarali, just edging her out just a little bit uh, in the uh, in the speed department. Um, when you get up there, do you all call any attention to yourself to try and get them to follow you, or are you just kind of like getting up there and then going to kind of start running across buildings? Question. Um, yes. n- knowing where it originally came from, can I look over there to see if I can still see the person? Where the, Ye- the, the arrow came from and where the shot came from? Can I look over there? Uh, you can. Uh, you also do know that Ferris pointed out that one of them was on one of the roofs here. Uh, kind of hiding in the ne- uh, kind of hiding in some of like the neon light. Is that different uh, so- from the one that shot? Uh, yes, yeah. yes, it would have been a different building. Because these are much closer. Like, there was one literally on top of the building, on top of one of the buildings that we were between in the alley. Yes, uh, you can You can look. Uh, I will give you perception and awareness for that. Visual, obviously, so it gives uh, uh, cat eyes. Yep. Um, perception. It could be worth noting that I have a charm that uh guarantees they'll follow us it's the moth to the candle thing it's a presence charm where i can piss off the people the foes that we want to engage in and they have no choice but to come after me before anybody else (laughs) that could be funny would play a game of uh, follow the leader, but make it so they can't catch the leaders. I wish I could do my like larceny disguise charms on other people. I just make all of you guys look like me and Scooby Doo shit. <laughs> I mean, if we found a costume shot, we could probably try and dress up as you. I just don't think it would work very well on for most of us. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, fairly loudly. So, uh, another thing, Ricky, your, your punks are in town. The Realm Breakers are doing a show in about, uh, four hours. We're going to catch that, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, so now you guys have a meetup spot. Go, go get a concert with the Realm Breakers. Do I care enough to use... Killing the dragon's bones for this. So how, who's... How, how would medium range be? Uh, I would say the medium range, since feeling the dragon's bones allows you to kind of uh, go through like a building and stuff. I would say that you can do like the first couple, uh, near like the first two or three floors below you. Um, That's the one that gives you the toff sight, right? Basically, yes. I have the yeah. black and white image. Um, would that be enough to sense the ones that Ferris had mentioned? Um, at least one of them. Uh, that's not entirely worth it. So I'll just use the Excellency for Awareness and throw um, four moats into it. So now I am a, a pretty little glowing beacon. Weird. Hmm. Oh, boy. It's almost like I want to draw attention to myself. Seven. Okay. Seven successes to find them. Knowing what Ferris told you, that there is one inside of uh, one of the buildings that you're on and one hiding within the... uh, Hiding kind of within the neon, um, you see... Uh, within the neon, you see kind of like the same dress and everything that Ricky uh, had described kind of like steps out from the the, the neon uh, of like a sign uh, onto like the roof across from you guys. And they when they step, they kind of have this uh, th- this dancing gait to them that kind of like they, they cross their legs in like weird manners and kind of like it seems that like uh, they're. They're moving like almost to a beat that's not heard. 
Um, and as that uh, they step out, the weirdest thing happens. A door on the roof that you all are on opens up and the same person comes out. Uh, within your line of sight are two Kais. Uh, I look at them. Catch me if you can. And I take off. Like this little glowing beacon just going rooftop to rooftop. I know that Tarali wanted to do something, so I'm going to see. Uh, are you going to uh, try and make them follow you as well? Or are you going to see whether they do first? Oh, also, like, when I point them out, I when I catch them, I point, literally point to them out to Tarali and be like, there. And just kind of like, and then it appears and it's like, oh, here also. What Charlie will do is who who had the arrow once it got pulled out? Is it still with Ricky? Yes, it is it should still be with Ricky. So Charlie will try to piss off the attackers, even though they've not attacked her, they've attacked, you know, Ferris. Uh basically she'll just mock his shooting abilities to make him seem impotent and pathetic with his shot um, and try to enrage him so with the moth to the candle charm so he won't be able to him or I guess other versions of him be able to attack any of my allies and will have no choice but to attack me they can take non-attack action such as following others um, but they can't attack anyone. They can resist it by spending a point of willpower, though. I guess that just makes them a little bitch who's scared to, to follow. Okay, so you would be, be you would be rolling to try and uh, you would essentially be rolling and have to beat their resolve, I believe, to actually have that go off correctly. That feels like a lot of ways that could go wrong. You have to beat their resolve, plus they can just say, nah, fuck it, and use a willpower. Uh, it's one of those, uh, it, it's one of those things with the, with the social system where, uh, where that, uh, it, it becomes, uh, you, you can basically resist it. But like, the thing is, is that, uh, since it, enemies don't get, uh, don't get stunt bonuses and can't just regen willpower in, uh, in combat like you guys can um them spending a willpower is huge uh i will let you know for the record michaela that uh kai's resolve um is a seven but uh since you kind of like described what you were doing and everything i will give you an extra two dice uh so if you want to go ahead and roll that go for it you're basically rolling to taunt them believe would be a charisma and presence roll. So I'm going to blow four moats <clears throat> on glowing coal radiance to pump it a little bit, <clears throat> which will give me two auto successes on the presence roll. Awesome. Good call. S especially since it keep, uh, especially since they have such a unreal resolve. And if I get any tens, I get an extra die. Oh. And you get two extra dice. Eleven successes. Holy shit. You know, I gave, I gave this NPC some ridiculous stats. And then here comes Michaela just blowing stuff out of the water. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to enjoy our show. If you liked what you heard, why not leave a review or tell a friend about us? It helps get the good word out about the work we put into this show. If you wanted to ask us any questions, you can contact us through Twitter at a pair of dice lost or email at a pair of dice lost at gmail.com. The theme song for this game is Dragon Dance by Raphael Crux, used under a Creative Commons license. And for making it this far, I saw that cool thing you did. 
So have some stunt dice. <laughs>